is the fault of a lot of the like kind of white political ideologues there were too scared to speak up and tell her mm. hey we have to actually organize something um you know so and then because of that you know they kind of didn't protect the people they, they were meant to be protecting unfortunately mm. but i don't know man it was a very weird situation and i just think that everyone just a lot of egos, you know, got fed there, unfortunately. That's so true. Any political movement, you got that. Everybody wants to hear um, themselves talk, man. They want to make a speech. Exactly. <laughs> you know? It's now, tiring, man. It's tiring. Now, you've been all over, and you talk about police brutality. Where have you seen the most oppressive police? Oh, that's a great question. Um, for me, I think I've seen the most oppressive police in... Turkey, yeah, Turkey, by far. <laughs> you know, like way, yeah, <laughs> you're yeah, the, you're the, the prison. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> but it's been, you know, even before that, like we, we were filming at one point and there was like a young girl who'd been, she, she was 13, I remember, and she had like a shrapnel wound in her back. No, sorry, I think a bullet lodged in her back and like a shrapnel wound in her head. And she couldn't go to the hospital because the police had parked like anti-personnel carriers outside the hospital. And even children, when they went to be like, we need to be treated, they were just arrested for terrorism. And it's like, what do you mean? Like, you know, I think the youngest person to get killed was a baby. And the baby was shot with a sniper. Oh my so, God. you know, yeah, it's, it's like, hmm, I don't think that was an accident, you know. So, honestly, the stuff I witnessed down there was unbelievably brutal. Um, and then after that, like, in terms of the context of where it is in the world, France, like, the French police are just awful, man. Like, really awful. Like... You know, like I covered the, the Yellow Vest protests, which were an amazingly interesting situation. And we went there and we were like, hey, we've got press pass. We need to go here. And they're like, no, you can't. And I was like, this is Europe. Like, you can't, like, you know what I mean? We're not living in a totalitarian society. We can walk down the road if we want. This wasn't like a police cordon. They would just, like, push you over and be like, no, get out of here. It's like, it's completely illegal, like, to do that for them, you know? And it's, you know, and people say, oh, why are you shocked? And it's like, well, because, you know, we fought tyranny twice you know we won the world wars and like we should be living in some kind of better place where that doesn't happen you know so i think it's i think it's really out of order but uh yeah turkey and france i, I think that's when i first found you during the yellow vest uh, movement now yeah w w were you when you saw that were you encouraged did you think it would be successful well this is the thing i don't know what what people a lot of people uh, you know quantify the success of a movement like that in did they win and it's like for me i'm saying it, it doesn't really matter i don't think if they won or not the fact that someone fights to say hey we're not having this i think is always important you know because it, you never know in 10 years what they did then might inspire the group that does win right yeah. you can't just you know you, I think you have to have a culture of resistance which i really respect the french for that you know right now there are huge clashes because macron is trying to give some insane authoritarian legal powers to the police where it will become will become illegal for people to film the police whilst on duty and you know that's crazy you can't have that in a democratic society um and it's punishable by like a custodial prison sentence or a, or a 400,000 euro fine like, or is it 40,000 i think sorry and it's, it's just crazy you know they can't do that so people are rightly so in my opinion out in the streets now and it's it's not just it's not any political group you know and that's like the yellow vests it wasn't you know, the, the yellow vest wasn't left or right or centrist or whatever. It was just, it was the people. There was, every group was in it, you know. Yeah. We, we ended up seeing anti-fascists fighting fascist members of the yellow vest. You know, there's footage of them both fighting each other in the vest protest. And to me, it was one of the purest forms of like a popular uprising in Europe for a long time. You know? And it was really fascinating. Mm -hmm. Now, what, don't, how could your own personal political views not uh, affect your reporting? Um, I think they do. You yeah. know, I think they do. And I, I think that any journalist that pretends that they don't are just being a little bit dishonest. I think the problem I'm, I'm not a problem that I have, but a, a thing that I recognize is like, yeah, I do have certain biases. And almost when you understand that and accept it, it actually becomes more useful. Because then I have to say, like, hang on. Am I being fair here? I know I've got this bias. Let me catch myself and check my bias. You know, as long as you're willing to critique yourself and accept critique, I think that's okay. Hmm. Um, I think, you know, it makes you a better journalist, actually. I said this before. I think total objectivity is kind of psychopathy, you know, because that would mean you don't, you're not swayed or you don't feel, you know. And it's, trust me, when you're covering war, 
if you don't feel certain things when you're covering that, you're, you're no good out there. You know, you have to be a well-rounded human being and feel empathy for the people. So, you know, I think you just got to check yourself and, you know, be fair. Now, how about yourself? How about PTSD? Yeah, and that, I had a bit of that after prison, yeah. actually. Like, that was a big right. deal. Um, it was weird. Like, I didn't think. I thought, I thought oh, I'm fine. And then, like, you know, I'd hear my door, like, the postman would deliver something. And I'd, jump, I'd wake up and jump out my skin because, obviously, the way we were woken up in the morning was the prison guard, right? They'd open the door and shower you and get you up. So I think just hearing that noise of, like, a door moving just, you know, it fricked me for, like, ages. I was really frightened of it. I was like, ooh, what, the, what is that? Um, but eventually, it's fine now. You know, like, I couldn't, I couldn't watch movies about prisons before as well. Yeah. I was just like, oh, turn this off, turn this off. Like, it's just a bad feeling. But now, I, you know, I'm fine now. It's easy. It's no problem now. But uh, it was definitely there. This might be a good time to take our commercial break. We are with Jake Hanrahan. You can find him at jakehanrahan.com. Uh, his platform is called popularfront.co. They have a Patreon, Popular Front. And... Uh, YouTube channel is also popular front. Uh, so keep an eye out for this guy's work. It's really, really good stuff. We'll be right back with more of Jake Hanrahan after these messages. And now a word from our sponsors. If you find yourself in need of legal representation, it can be a very stressful time in your life. In my career, I have dealt with thousands of lawyers. I've dealt with thousands of law firms, and I can confidently recommend to you Keith M. Davidson at kmdlaw.com. Available 24 hours, seven days a week. Just log into kmdlaw.com. That's kmdlaw.com. Or you can call toll-free 833-4KMD-LAW. That's 833-4KMD-LAW. Personal injury, wrongful death, STDs, sexual assault, car accidents. They handle it all efficiently and professionally. It doesn't matter how imposing the opposition may be because the team at kmdlaw.com are battle-tested and fierce. They will not stop until justice prevails. Go to kmdlaw.com or call toll-free 833-4KMD-LAW. If you're in for the fight of your life, stop screwing around and contact KMD Law. Are you ready to change your life but don't know how to start? Is your stress and worries keeping you awake at night? Have you been battling grief, anxiety, or depression all alone? Have you lost touch with your own sense of being or spirituality? Soul Free Therapies offers professional and affordable live video streaming counseling and coaching services from the comfort of your own home. Sessions offered in English, Spanish, and Portuguese. Go to our website at www.soul-free.com and book your first session today. The Opperman Report is brought to you by Aquadam.net. You can give them a call at 707-764-2119. A flooded home is never easy to deal with. You're left with the mess to clean up, the insurance companies to deal with, and not to mention all the memories, the precious memories that are lost in the flood. You can never replace those. And Aquadam can be a tool in your arsenal to protect your home and property from the floodwaters. The coffer dam is filled with water to control water and is reusable as long as it's taken care of. It can protect your home or business from rising floodwaters like a dam, but without the beavers. It can also be used in construction. If you need an area to be dewatered, an aqua dam can do the job. An aqua dam was used at SeaWorld in Orlando for the Mako roller coaster ride during the coaster's construction by dewatering the work area. An aqua dam is now dewatering the work area at San Antonio SeaWorld for their newest roller coaster ride. An aqua dam has been used in many construction projects all around the U.S. and all around the world. Now give aqua dam a call, 707-764-2119. You can look them up online at aquadam.net. You can find them on Facebook at Aquadam Inc. And you call them up, you email them, you tell them Ed Opperman sent you, and they're going to take 10% off the price. Aquadam.net, 707-764-2119. PureSoapFlakes.com, 218-568-2525. Have you ever heard of Castile Soap? Pure Soap Flake Company handcrafts fine soap bars, laundry powder, and concentrated soap flakes using organic vegetable oils from their northern Minnesota facility. Bathe your body and wash your clothes with pure soap products that are free of fragrance, GMOs, palm oil, sodium lauryl sulfate, and synthetic additives. Keep it clean, folks. Pure Soap Flake Company products are kind to living creatures and sensitive skin, safe for drains and waterways, and work great in high-efficiency washers and top- and front-loading machines. 
they have a little promotion going on. Contact them to order some soap. Mention the Opera Report. You're going to get a free gift. They're going to send a little extra soap, travel size, soap bars, and laundry soap, cleaning soap flakes. I've been using that stuff all day long today. Great stuff. Order today at puresoapflakes.com or give them a call. 218-568-2525. 218-568-2525. Pure Soap Flake Company is a proud member of the Handcrafted Soap and Cosmetic Guild. It's the Opperman Report. And now, here is Investigator Ed Opperman. Okay, welcome back to the Opperman Report. I'm your host, Private Investigator Ed Opperman. Uh, we're here today with Jake Hanrahan, who's like a, a war correspondent, like the old days, you know, Dan, but, but he's like a do-it-yourself kind of guy doing this. Uh, check out popularfront.co. His Patreon is called Popular Front. And also, too, um, jakehanrahan.com. And also, the YouTube channel is uh, Popular Front. Okay, Jake, um, real quick, too, we were talking about police around the world. Where did you find the, the best policing? Did you, did you spot? <laughs> um, I guess the best ones are the ones that I haven't come in contact with. They just leave you alone, you know. Yeah. Like, um, but certainly in, in Scandinavian countries, they're kind of chilled out, you know, from what I've noticed. They kind of leave you alone. They're not, like, as on your back. Um yeah, like, they're not bothered about the kind of... I mean, in England, like, our police will... They'll write you a ticket for anything. They're desperate, you know. They'd love to stop people for all sorts. Um, so the police stopped me in my car a while ago, and he said, oh, your back light is out. And it was just dirt on the light in the end we, we discovered. And I was like, it's just dirt. Like, you can't stop me for that. He's like, go and get your car washed. I was like, really? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, they're... they're you know, we call them, like, uh, bully boys sometimes because, you know, some of them do good stuff. Like, sure, like, the ones that are, like, you know investigating pedophiles and stuff like yeah. that but generally you know they don't do a lot apart from just bother people you know like it's a real it's a real pain actually you know and they're kind of known for it really it's not just me you know i'm not like a cab or anything it's i just have had bad experiences with them and i don't feel like they serve the community like they're meant to be you know yeah, yeah we do need police you know like there's old people who yeah, get scanned yeah, they get I conned agree. out of their money you know that's Absolutely. Kind of, it's so kind of, you know we yeah, need yeah, cabs no, yeah. Now, uh, you spent a lot of time in the Mideast, uh, Israeli-Palestinian conflict? Yeah, yeah, I covered, uh, I was in Jerusalem in, I think, 2018, 2017, I think, actually. Um, that was the last time it really kicked off in Al-Aqsa, um, or Temple Mount, as the, the uh, Israelis call it. So, yeah, man, there was a lot, of, um, a lot of clashes around there. Several people got killed. It was chaos. It was really wild, actually. But uh, a very interesting place. I really like East Jerusalem. And and what was the the conflicts like? Police, well, military. Yeah, at the time it wasn't like military. It was well, some of the border guards, the Israeli border guards, were indiscriminately just you know absolutely pumping the crowd full of um, you know these huge tear gas rounds and rubber bullets and stuff like that. So you know there was very little. Um, I mean, they just didn't care who they hit, you know. But at the same time, it was there was a lot of children in the crowd. And it was like, ah, don't bring your kids to this. Like, it was, everybody knew it was going to get violent, like, without a doubt. So it was it was just a very horrible situation, you know. It was, it was brutal, man. Like, I don't know. The, 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 the whole, um, I think Nietzsche said it. Like, Nietzsche said, like, Jerusalem should just, the only way for it to be peaceful would be to um, flatten it. <laughs> you know, which sounds mm -hmm. disgusting. I would never want that to happen. But my point is, it's just it's just too long that conflict is too long in a tooth i think to ever be fixed you know and and now when you're over there like you get press credentials or, and do they supervise you do they follow you around no the, the actually the israelis are, were incredibly open you know they were like you know they i got the credentials and they were like okay off you go and like they didn't bother me at all um and certainly you know we spent a lot of time filming in the Palestinian area in East Jerusalem, you know, and we spent a lot of time with Palestinians. Didn't really get any bother, um, to be honest, you know, like, lo that's one of the places in the Middle East where I haven't, but certainly I'm sure you would, you know, like, I know, I know journalists that, you know, Israeli journalists that if they kind of, if they're pro-Palestine, oh God, like, their life is, can become a living hell, you know what I mean? Yeah, I do. Now, what about, are you able to visit those where the settlers are? You know, I heard that that's really intense. No, I didn't go there, but I have a very good friend of mine, Oren Rosenfeld, and he, um, he, he's like a great producer over there. He has a, a company called Holy Land Productions. I mean, he's, he's Israeli, but he has his own beliefs, you know. He's very kind of, he's, he's, he's for no sides, if you know what I mean. He's good night, all sides for him. And he made a, a whole film, I think he spent like a year, 
hanging around uh, the settlers, especially with a group called the Price Taggers. And those guys are like brutal, man. Like, you know, for anything that happens, they, they will just go into Palestinian areas and just smash it to pieces. And it's like you're literally living in the areas where, you know, in the